Hello everyone, welcome to your next class. In this one, we're gonna be talking about naive Bayes classifiers, and we're gonna be talking about it specifically within the context of text classification. Uh, Bayesian statistics is a form or a kind of a sub-discipline of statistical theory that uses something called prior knowledge in order to inform uh, from uh, in order to inform future classification or future statistical likelihood of g some given event. It's unique in certain statistical fields because it does use that prior knowledge. In a lot of other statistics, they try to be very... Uh, uh, not not consider what is probably maybe already known or possibly known from the data that they have in order to inform how they do it, how it does its classification and, and analysis. Um, however, using using Bayes, you do have that feature as kind of built into it. Value based classifiers are actually a really useful way in order to create spam filters. So how our original uh, email spam filters work were based on a very, very simple statistical calculation that existed for many years prior to, you know, what we're doing with it these days. And the nice thing about it is because it's such a light and easy to build model, uh, it tends to be very robust given its simplicity. So we're going to learn how to use Bayesian class classification within text because that's kind of the classic example of it. However, we use Bayes theory and like Bayes analysis and mathematics for all kinds of things from like, um, you know, trying to find uh, lost uh, ships at sea or planes that have crashed into this into the sea to you know, uh, so many different things. So it's a really nice, simple way of taking information. We have some prior knowledge and trying to adapt and find, like optimize the likelihood of finding some sort of given event. Uh, so in this class, we're gonna learn about just basic Bayesian prob probability. I'm gonna show you how, uh, like the, the function, the Bayesian function, uh, how it works, why it works the way it does. We're gonna look at like the, the syntax and the statistical symbols around it, what they actually mean, and how we apply basic Bayes to you know simple things. In our next class, we're gonna spend a little bit more time going in depth on that, and then in our coding sections, we're gonna spend time figuring out how we build some sort of code around that. And because uh, because we're taking text and trying to build a mathematical representation of it, there is a deal, uh, there's a, uh, a fair amount of uh, data wrangling and manipulation that is going to be going on. We have to essentially convert words into numbers in some way, shape, or form. So we are going to spend a little bit of time dealing with the processing section of our data science workflow. So now we're finally got some data that we need to change in like fairly significant ways in order to do real math on it. So um, we're hoping that maybe we have other processing examples in our future classes as we look through them, but this one is definitely going to spend a lot of time looking at how we take this text, how we manipulate it into a number or into a way that we have some sort of we can do calculations on top of it. We're then going to play around with um, what we mean by learning rate or cost function with Bayes and uh, these other methods, you know, training and testing afterwards. So when we talk about Bayesian statistics, what do we mean? What does Bayes mean? What is so Bayes uh, was a person. He figured out a way to uh, do these kind of simple back of the napkin kind of calculations that were extremely robust that used statistical theory in a way that wasn't really being considered before. And he was actually a little bit shy about publishing his insight on this because it was seemingly so simple and common sense that it, he didn't feel like it could contribute or it would be received very well within the community. However, uh, since he finally, you know, released this stuff, it's been used extensively uh, from uh, so many different fields. We use it in like, uh, we use it within psychology and psychoacoustics. It's used for spam filters. It's used uh, all over the place. And even though it's a really simple way of calculating something, it's tends to be extremely powerful. So when we talk about Bayesian theory, the real hallmark of a Bayesian method is that we take in prior knowledge. We have some information, we have a data set that has a lot of information that we can kind of calculate 
um, before we can like calculate some numbers around that data set before we do our calculations. So let's say, you know, we have an example of like golf and weather patterns. So we have a bunch of different golf sessions, how many times this person went golfing and what the weather was like. Uh, it's, it's, is it sunny? Is it windy? So on and so forth. And if we have like, you know, a hundred sessions, and we we can say okay well uh, some prior knowledge says okay this of those 100 sessions uh, the the times that they went golf seven they went listen they went golfing 70 times and of those 70 times 50 of those times were sunny we could say okay so we have like a high prior likelihood that if it's sunny this person might actually end up going golfing. This sounds like obvious. We should probably be using this for all kinds of things, but this is not that something that is typically done within statistics because we don't want necessarily our prior knowledge influencing our future classification or choices. Uh, we want to like have some sort of way of calculating probability or estimating without having the influence of like our bias, let's say, to that data set but in Bayes, it's openly embraced. And that's what makes Bayesian statistics a little bit different than other statistical methods. It considers and uses prior knowledge in order to generate future choices. So um, when we talk about Bayes, there's not really a cost function associated with it. It's just a bunch of probabilities. It's like the statistical likelihood of something. This is what Bayes' Bayes formula looks like. I'm going to explain what all of this means in our syntax section. Uh, this is something that is just like, I kind of have Bayes' formula burned into my brain and memorized because I've used it so much in my life. And um, however, uh, this will all make sense once we go into our syntax section. So let's move into that. We'll learn how this formula works. And then in our next section, we'll apply this knowledge to an example of like text and text filters, okay? We'll also consider like a very small example while I do this syntax as well. Um, so without further ado, let's look at what that formula actually means and pick apart all of that information that we just saw. Okay, everyone, here we are in our syntax section. So what is Bayes' formula actually telling us here? First off, you'll notice that we have uh, these letters P, A, and B. P means what is the probability of something, and the something is whatever is wrapped in these uh, um, these braces here. And it's a little bit, it initially is counterintuitive how to read this. Uh, what A is saying is A is like event A, and B is event B. This line here is will make sense. So I'm going to describe, I'm going to read this out in terms of what this mean, like how I read this when I, when I see this, what is the probability of event A given some information or given event B, some information B. So it sounds a little counterintuitive because you're starting with A and then going to B. But so what this line is telling us is it's separating the, the information. So we could have like, what is the, pro what is the probability of A given, um, you know, data B, C, and D. That's what that is essentially saying. And so when we look at this, we're saying, you know, if we use an example of, let's say, fruits or something, we have a 50 different fruits. We're trying to figure out fruits and vegetables. And we have, okay, this is a banana, this is an or, or this is a fruit, it's long, it has seeds in it. This is a fruit, it's not long and doesn't have seeds in it, and so on and so forth. How we would do this, or how we would read this is, um, we want to know what is the probability that an item is a fruit given that the, the item in question doesn't have seeds, it's not colorful, and, you know, isn't long or something like that. When we, what we're looking at, in order to determine that, how we calculate this likelihood, we're actually, well, I'll be able to come up with a number like 30% or something. It'll come out as a floating point between zero and one. How you do that is you calculate the probability of event B. So if we're looking at what is the probability that some given item is a fruit given uh, that there is some B, B data, B parameters about it, we calculate what is the probability that it is not a fruit B, it's like a vegetable or something, given that it has some A data. 
Uh, and these two values here are our priors. So P of A and P of B are saying, given that there are, let's say we have 50 fruit and there are like 40 of them or 50 different items and 40 of them are fruits and 10 of them are not fruits, uh, that we, we multiply the likelihood that uh, that the item is in fact a vegetable, given that we have some information about it, A, times the prior likelihood that it's a fruit in the first place over, we normalize over the prior probability that it's something that it was a vegetable in the first place, okay? And so what this is all doing is we calculate the likelihood of, so we, can, we get the, the likelihood of a given event, given the likelihood that it is not in fact that thing, and times it by the prior likelihood that that occurs, and then we normalize by the prior likelihood that it isn't, okay? And so this basic function, or this basic analysis is how we build things like spam filters. So let's say we had, you know, uh, we wanted to know if something was spam or not spam because it's like some sort of financial, you know, thing. I don't know, it's saying like give give your credit card to 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 some fictitious thing. Uh, so how we could determine it's spam in that case is we have a bunch of information already that says, okay, uh, if it has these words... Uh, it's spam, and if it ha doesn't have these words, it's not spam. So what we could do is, okay, we have words like, you know, credit card, social security number, free trip, all of these words. Um, if we don't have those words in there, what is the likelihood that something is spam or not? We can calculate that by, you know, knowing, okay, given that this information exists, what is the likelihood that something is spam with this information and how... and, and normalized by the prior likelihood. So knowing that we get like 70% of our emails are spam, if we have some information that says, okay, it doesn't look like spam, but 70% of the time it is spam, uh, we correct for those considerations. And then we normalize over the probability that it's not the thing we were looking for in the first place. So that is the basic understanding of how these to like both the symbols, how this straight line works, what P means and what A and B mean, how to read this, you know, the probability of A given B, and then how we calculate the likelihood of something around that. So we would say, okay, what is the probability of spam given that we have uh, our, we have like things like Viagra and like other, other common spam things that we want to remove? Uh, we would say, okay, well, what is the likelihood that this is uh, spam, uh, or is not spam given there's information times the li the prior likelihood, uh, normalized by the the prior knowledge that we have about it. So in our next class, guys, we're gonna use an actual example so that we can sh I can do some like very rough back of the napkin calculations to make this all come together. It's really important to understand the basic function of these of this math and like how we talk about statistical theory using this notation because it'll be really important for us when we then use our example in our next class. So what did we learn today, guys? We learned. Um, some basic, we learned the Bayes formula. We learned that how we do most of our spam filters is using something called naive Bayes. We learned some of the basic syntax of Bayes and like statistical theory, what that bar symbol, symbol means and like how we're gonna go about calculating the likelihood of an event given some prior, or given some information and prior knowledge. So in our next class, we'll spend more time on that. Thank you very much and see you then.